Mr. Potter. Lucius Malfoy. We made it last. That was the moment British actor Jason Isaacs first sent a chill down the spines of thousands of children worldwide, playing the sinister Lucius Malfoy in the biggest film franchise of all time, Harry Potter. nothing more than a murderer. With that role, he's taken his place amongst movie royalty on the silver screen and on the red carpet. Unpredictable gravity. But it's by no means his first taste of box office blockbusters. Isaacs played possibly the smartest man on the planet, NASA scientist Roland Quincy in Armageddon. Would you like a lesson, sir, in the rules of war? And won acclaim for a standout performance as a sadistic redcoat in The Patriot. The face. A role that set the tone for the deliciously evil Death Eater that's made him a household name. That is my true mask. Masks, meteors, Mel Gibson, and a whole lot of movie magic. Jason Isaacs is your connector of the day. Well, hundreds of you sent in your questions to Jason Isaacs, many of you wanting to know more about the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Well, I caught up with your connector of the day here in London and asked him, firstly, about uh, one of his other projects, the Jameson Dunn in 60 Seconds Awards. He's a judge of that. Take a listen to this. It's a chance for people to make a film that can last no longer than 60 seconds, which is a send-up parody, a loving parody, of one of their favourite blockbusters. And uh, what's been amazing is how talented the people are. I thought it was some kind of, you know, an amateur, slightly patronising thing to let people muck about with a camcorder. Mm -hmm. But there's some brilliant entries this year, and they just get better and better. What's the point of it, do you think? Well, the point of it is that when this technology came along, people said it was going to democratise filmmaking. You know, everyone now has a camera. Actually, you can make it on your phone. Everyone's got editing software on their laptop. Mm. Uh, but in, there aren't really many places to show these films. If you want to make a real short film, a 15- or 20-minute film, you've got to get a whole film crew and a whole budget. But these things anybody can do, and all you need is imagination and wit. Viewer questions. Um, Brandon says, you've played a lot of bad guys in movies, like in The Patriot, uh, Harry Potter and Peter Pan. Do you prefer to play the bad guy or the good guys in the movies, which do you find easier? He I says. like having the good writing. When it's the bad writing, that's when you earn the money. All those films you mentioned were fantastic scripts. I just like being believable and not have people throw vegetables at the screen. <laughs> good answer. Uh, Kaylee Moffat asks Are there any parts in the Harry Potter series that you look back on and think, wow, I really did a brilliant job there, or I really oh. captured the <laughs> mood there, or even I didn't do that very well? Uh, that, the latter, more often. <laughs> I thought you would say, Are there any parts in the Harry Potter series you'd rather have played? <laughs> Um, I did, when I went for the audition for Lucius Malfoy, I actually went to audition for Lucius Malfoy and Gilderoy Lockhart, which is the part that Ken Branagh ended up playing. Mm -hmm. And I felt briefly disappointed when I heard Ken had got it. And, of course, five films further on, yeah. I'm feeling rather smug. <laughs> Brilliant. What about parts you liked and parts you didn't? What did you enjoy most? Of uh, the Harry Potter films? Mm -hmm. The best bits, uh, and I know this is not a very kind thing to say to the viewers, the best bits are off-camera because I get to sit with this British theatrical royalty and just be a mouse-like in the corner and listen to them swap stories about what, it, you know, Michael Gamble and Maggie Smith and Bill Nye and Gary Oldman and, and Richard, the great, late Richard Harris. You're being too modest. They've got better stories than me. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey um, has written in. She asks, so how, how and what do you do to prepare yourself for a day of shooting Harry Potter as your character? And is there any exercise you do in order... Um, to get into the zone, as Get in were. touch with my inner wizard. Yes. I, well, you know, I watch a lot of wizard documentaries. I have a lot of original archive footage of wizards at work. And, uh, no, I just <laughs> turn up and lie down on the trailer and wait for them to call me and eat chocolate. That's basically all I do. You've been doing it for some time now. So does it get easy? I mean, is it much, much easier these days to get into character? Well, the, you know, all I have to do on Harry Potter is put that wig on. Uh, I don't want to make it sound too easy. They might start asking for some of the money back. But I just, <laughs> I put the wig on, and the first thing that happened on the first film was I, uh, the wig, it's all straight. Lucy Malfoy's hair was straight. It's now a little bit bedraggled as his character is. But in order to keep the hair straight, I had to tilt my head back or else it crumpled. As soon as you tilt your head back, you're looking down your nose at somebody, and there was the entire character. Talk about the cast, because you're right. I mean, this is about as good as it gets when it comes to um, British theatrical acting, isn't well, it? Well, what normally happens as an actor, what my processes, there is such a thing, pretentious word, mm. is that I try and make something real and human. I find what, what somebody's thinking, wanting, dreaming, hoping, fearing. And, uh, and then you get to the Harry Potter set and all bets are off. Everybody is just trying to chew up the scenery. You, you're only on screen for minutes in every film and uh, everybody wants to make an impact. And, you know, it's 
big scale entertainment and these are bold colours we're etching in. If I were to ask you whether people really enjoyed working on it, and would you honestly say that this was a cast that worked well together? There's something about the films, particularly now for the last six, seven years, however long it's been, mm. we know, everybody on the set knows that these stories are loved. It mm. doesn't mean that you don't have to work hard to mm. make them good, but there's none of the anxiety you experience on, on every other project that ever happens, which is how is this going to be received. You're already at a very successful party. It's like knocking on the door of a party. It's already a riot. You don't need to worry if anyone's going to turn up or eat the sandwiches. Donnie Harris says, Hey, Jason, I've loved your pot of work. Hey, Donnie. You're deliciously devious, he says. I'm curious if being involved as an actor has ruined any hope of you being a viewing fan of the Harry Potter film. I'm a huge fan of the films. In fact, I wasn't into them, number three, number six. And I went to the premiere for number six, and I was, like everybody else, desperate to find so out what was going to happen. No, um, but even when you are in the films, yeah, you don't see, back, first of all, any of the effects that they do, and you don't see all the scenes you're not in. And I, I love watching them, I'm sure, every bit as much as the viewers. Were you a bit miserable when you went C3 and 6? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, not yeah. here. Jealous, I mean, bitter and jealous. <laughs> I kept on waiting and hoping, I kept on finding moments where I thought that maybe for the DVD release they should stick a Lucius Malfoy scene in. <laughs> and also, you shoot scenes that aren't in the final cut, so you, you know, there's a number of times during the movies that I've shot a scene that's a particular favourite of mine, and then I go to the you know, premiere, and there's millions of people there, and then the thing comes up and it's gone, and I try not to be found weeping when the lights come up. <laughs> Sydney asks, how does it feel to know that you're part of one of the most epic movie series ever made and that really is echoed by many of the uh, viewer questions that we're getting today. It's, I know this is going to sound an odd thing to say but most of the time when I work I don't really care about the public, I don't care how the thing is received, I don't, the bit that I really enjoy is the process. Harry Potter is the only time that the real joy of the work has come afterwards because you see the thrill, not, never mind how the books themselves have created literacy and you know they've done some work marvels for people who never read before mm. adults and children mm. but the films give such pleasure all over the world and just meeting me me doing nothing bringing nothing to the party laying nothing on the table me just standing breathing in a room can make people happy because they've seen those films and that's a real privilege that's come to me a question from the Philippines here. Justine says, Hello, Mr. Isaacs. I'm Justine. I'm 19 years old. I'm a big Potter fan. I really love your portrayal of Lucius Malfoy. If you were Lucius Malfoy just for a day, <laughs> yeah. uh, what would you do? Uh, I think I'd probably just kill all the muggles. That's all he dreams of, Lucius Malfoy. And that's why, you know, as much as I, uh, we all laugh about how, uh, and I laugh about playing a wizard and how over the top it is, really you don't need to look very far to find kind of bigots and racists and, and people feel the same kind of hatred he is. And he just thinks the world would be a better place if all the muggles were dead. What would you do uh, to Lucius Malfoy if you were to actually meet him? I have a feeling there's something Samson-like going on with the hair. I'd probably shave his head. Wazzy asks, now that Harry Potter is almost over, what do you have planned for the future? Do you have any a new movie roles? Uh, I do have, uh, oddly enough, plans for my future. <laughs> Not just sitting watching myself on DVD. Uh, I'm in a new film called Green Zone that Paul Greengrass directed, starring Matt Damon, yeah. that comes out in a few weeks' time. It's a fantastic blockbuster thriller. Uh, if you liked any of the Bourne films, I'm sure you're going to love this. Uh, or possibly love it more because I'm in it.